Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and today we are wearing the news football shirt because we are going to be delivering that news to you today. We've got game week 29 team news including injury updates on the likes of Ollie Watkins and a few more surprises there as well. We're also going to be talking about free hits for game week 29 and other uh, various bits and bobs that I think you're going to find really, really interesting. So guys, if you do enjoy this final decisions video, make sure you drop a like, do subscribe if you're new around here. Let's get started. So let's start off with the press conferences. We don't have press conferences from every team, but we have got from any team who plays in the Premier League this game week or teams who also play in the FA Cup this weekend. We have news from those teams. So some of this is going to be more relevant than others. We're going to start you off with Aston Villa since there was there's no fixture and no uh, just nothing to say about Arsenal or Bournemouth this weekend. But Aston Villa, here is the big one really. And we do need to talk about Oli Watkins in more detail. So first of all, let's start right there. Watkins sustained a cut to the knee during the... Uh, the Conference League game last night. It was just kind of below the knee. He sustained a cut there. He did stay on the pitch for a, for a little while there, but he did uh, eventually ask to be removed from the field. Obviously, that cut to the knee was, you know, uh, causing him enough pain that he wanted to be removed from the field. He did score a goal during the time where he was on the field with that cut to his knee. Um, we haven't got any more information from today. We did have an Emery press conference today, but most of that information there has been embargoed, which means it's not been released to the public. So we've got no new updates today on Ollie Watkins but here is the situation he has a cut very very close to his knee if that cut requires stitches there is a good chance that he is going to be out for Sunday's game because you know we don't want him reopening that wound you know because he's got that cut on his knee stitching it together that's usually seven days to recover from something like that but if he reopens it and you know things go badly there he could get that infected and, and that could cause even longer term problems. So if Watkins requires stitches to his knee, there's a very good chance that he is going to be completely ruled out. So I think with Watkins, the good thing here is even though we don't know for sure whether he's going to be available or not, it should be a case of he either plays because he doesn't require stitches or he does not play because he does require stitches. It should be as, as simple as that. I know things often aren't as simple as that, but a bench appearance or an early substitution seems unlikely. It is not a, you know, it's, it's a flesh wound really here it's not a muscular issue it's not going to be a case of managing his minutes it is a case of do they want to risk reopening that wound obviously Aston Villa have a long international break after this game week so if he can be rested for this game because uh, if he did need stitches which we still don't know and it's very very difficult to find that information out we will try of course over the next 24 hours but if you have those stitches you would, you would imagine that he is just rested throughout the next couple of weeks and then comes back fresh as a daisy so it's difficult if you have Watkins you keep him if you are on a free hit you probably maybe look at uh, strengthening your bench but we'll talk a little bit uh, in a few minutes about what to do with the Watkins situation based on the information we have right now but that's all I can give to you guys right now that's the best I've got for you I'm, I'm afraid uh, other players for Aston Villa Diego Carlos has a hamstring issue he could also potentially be out and McGinn begins a three game ban uh, we've got no uh, fixture for Bournemouth so Brentford for Reguilon he should be fit and available so he's actually been training this week so good news on Region and Burmo also could play his first minutes of 2024 yes he is back on grass so we could see uh, a, a, you know Burmo coming back into the team which could be pretty interesting not sure if he'll start necessarily but uh, yeah could see a few minutes at least at the end of the game Norgard however is not going to make it for game week 29 just a quick note on the Burmo thing those of you guys thinking of maybe going for a Johan Wissa this game week I think Burmo potentially being back could damage the potential for minutes for Wissa. So just be aware of that, guys. Nothing on Brighton, but for Burnley, Alder Kill is still out. Foster, Kolyosho, Ramsey, Redmond, they remain out as well. Uh, apparently, according to company, and he does like to keep his cards close to his chest, there could be a few positive surprises in the game week 2019. And there's no Premier League fixture for Chelsea, but we did get the news that Badia Shile and Chilwell are back in training. And of course, we've got nothing for Crystal Palace. Nothing for Everton, but for Fulham, Jimenez. Raul Jimenez is back and available. Again, he has been training all week. So those of you thinking about Muniz... Just be aware that we've got Jimenez and Broja both uh, now available at the Fulham team right now, all competing from that for that one forward slot. So Muniz, although you probably imagine still starts, I don't think it is 100% guaranteed, but perhaps more importantly, I don't think it is guaranteed that Muniz plays 90 minutes. I think Jimenez could see some minutes at the end of the game. But the good news at Fulham is there are no new, there's no injury concerns in the entire squad. Everyone in the entire Fulham squad is actually available at the moment. So good news there for Fulham fans. For 
For Liverpool, no fixture. Darwin was subbed in the Europa League as a precaution, so no injury uh, issue there. Jota and Trent, this is really interesting, and Curtis Jones, actually, all could be back in game week 30. Yes, so they could be back a little bit sooner than expected. Could be back immediately after the international break. So it's not guaranteed, but just something to be aware of. Game week 30, Jota, Trent could be back in that Liverpool team. Could be interesting, those of you guys thinking about wildcarding in 30 and 31. You might really be thinking about those Liverpool boys. For Luton, Chong is available, minus scare in the, in the week there. Uh, Adebayo, he could actually be out for the entire season, but there's no new injury returnees at all for Luton. So it's going to be pretty much the same as last game week. Man City have no fixture, but we have got a couple of bits of information now. Edison will hopefully be back in game week 30, and De Bruyne has been ruled out of this game week, uh, of this FA Cup game due to a groin issue. For Manchester United, Hoyland, Maguire, and Aaron Wambasaka are back in training, although there's no fixture there. As with Newcastle, no fixture, but Gordon's injury is not as bad as initially feared, so might be cause to keep Gordon. If you do currently have him, leave him on your bench potentially, because he could be back as early as game week 30. Pope is now not expected back until game week 35, so if Newcastle do have a double game week in game week 34, it could be Dubravka with a double game week fixture in game week 34. That could be really, really interesting if you are still holding on to Dubravka. Could be a double game week goalkeeper for 34, potentially. Uh, for Nottingham Forest, Alanga and Callum Hudson Odoi were apparently benched last game week due to a tactical decision where uh, Nuno kind of wanted to play slightly more centrally with Origi and uh, Gibbs White there. So it, it, he actually commented that the team is probably going to change again for game week 29. Maybe we might see a return of Alanga and Hudson Odoi to the starting 11 because uh, he kind of made comments that the second half was a bit more positive when Alanga and Hudson Odoi were on the pitch. So anyone who was worried a little bit about Alanga and him potentially being benched again as he was in game week 28, I think actually the potential for Alanga to start in game week 29 has gone up due to Nuno's comment. So uh, yeah, something that is pretty positive if you are looking at differential Alanga for game week 29. Uh, Ina and Reina are close apparently and Montiel has, uh, is rumoured to have suffered an injury setback there as well. Sheffield United, no fixture, nothing to talk about for Spurs. Now, here's the big news from Spurs. Richarlison, apparently, should be available. Yes, uh, he's uh, made some good progress as back, back in training. So, yeah, maybe Richarlison's optimism from uh, a couple of weeks ago was more justified than we thought it was. So, yeah, he should be available, according to Ange Postacoglu, for this game week, which could potentially mean that Son is going to be back on the wing. Not sure if that impacts your captaincy decision. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But something to be aware of if Richarlison does end up starting. Uh, Van der Ven is going to be out for game week 29 with Dragosin expected to take his place in the Spurs starting 11. For West Ham, Emerson has a groin issue still. He's going to have a late assessment for this game, so he's not guaranteed a start. Paqueta was subbed off in the Europa League as a precaution, so no significant injury there. He was uh, intentionally taken off. Uh, he, he was, you know, fit enough to continue, but uh, he because after a, a, you know, a minor issue in the first half, he was okay to continue into the second half, but Moyes kind of said towards the end of the game, look, we are many goals up. We'll say it's substitute off Paqueta just as a precaution. So he is ready to go for game week 29. So I think that's pretty much good news for Paqueta, but something to be aware of that he may have picked up a very, very minor issue in game week, uh, well, between game week 28 and 29 that at least slowed him down a little bit. But I don't think it's major. Uh, Cornet's going to be out still with his hamstring injury. And finally, Wolves, no fixture, but Cunha could be back in this FA Cup fixture. So there we go. Cunha return very, very soon. Hopefully, Cunha is back for game week 30 and maybe comes back into our minds for selection once again. So we need to talk about Ollie Watkins, don't we, guys? So, uh, yeah, it depends if you're on a free hit or not. I think if you are on a free hit, you're probably, unless we get any new information, you probably keep him in your starting 11. Of course, if you're on a free hit, you can actually pick nine attackers. Uh, wait, is that right? Nine, nine attackers, five midfielders, and three forwards. That's eight. You can pick eight attackers. Um, so you can only play seven of those eight attackers. So, therefore, if you have Watkins in your free hit team, you can start him and make sure you have a decent bench player. So, for example, if you're playing a 3-5-2 formation, you might want to start with Watkins and then maybe on your bench, you could maybe have Duran, who is uh, Watkins' backup in that forward position for Aston Villa. Maybe you could have Morris as your third forward uh, on your bench. So if Watkins does turn out to be unavailable, then you have that bench option ready to go straight away. Uh, like I was saying earlier, it seems like Watkins' availability is going to be binary. He either starts or he doesn't even get a single minute. So it's not going to be a case of one point bench uh, points for Watkins, in my opinion. So I'm not too worried about that one there. Uh, I think 
right now, you could potentially take a risk. You could bring in just Duran. You could exclude Watkins in your squad entirely. But I don't really see the harm. If you're on a free hit, I don't see the harm in starting with Watkins and just ensuring you have that good backup option ready to go if uh if Watkins is unavailable for whatever reason. Now, if you're not on a free hit, things become a little bit more difficult. I would, using current information, opt to keep him in your team and hope for the best. That's what I would be doing. I'm sure you've got other guys in your team right now who are guaranteed not to play this game week. So those guys are going to be the priority transfers out before an Ollie Watkins. I would also consider, though, taking a hit to bring in backup not to sell Watkins but to bring in you know an additional player where maybe make one more transfer than you are expecting to um, just to deal with that Watkins situation um, and I guess one more thing on on those of you who are not on a free hit and I know you guys are going to be asking me how many hits should I take I would be taking hits to get in attackers that you think are going to score four or more points I think that is uh, pretty much it no hits for defenders uh, but I want to go into more detail about the kind of options that we do have in game week 29. But before we do that, uh, you guys might still be on the fence about a free hit. Uh, I want to go over this really, really quickly because I don't think this is a super easy question to answer. But generally speaking, the less players you have available to play in Game Week 29... You know, if you have very few players, then you probably want to consider a free hit if you have one. If you don't have a free hit and maybe you have a wild card, we will be talking about a wild card in a few minutes time. But if you are thinking about a free hit, if you are like me, you have literally two players and one of them is Watkins and the other one is Taylor, then I for sure am free hitting this game because I've only got two players. Now, if you've got around five players or six players, this is where you could kind of go either way. But if you have seven players playing, playing players, players with fixtures for game week 29, before you make any transfers, then you absolutely do not need to free hit. You are absolutely in the clear. You are absolutely safe right now. You can maybe take a hit or two, make a couple of transfers, get up to nine players, I think is going to be enough and you're going to be in a good situation. Uh, but I think really it's more about what players you have than, you know, how many players you have. So can you easily get to four or more of these key attackers before you take any hits, I guess? So if you can have in your team for game week 29, before you play that free hit, before you make any transfers, Son, Watkins, Tony, Bowen and Madison. If you've got four of these or maybe you've got three of these and you can bring in an additional one using a free transfer then I think you've already got the main point scorers for game week 29 and if you do have those players well if you have an Ariola, a Taylor you know these players who aren't great but hey they'll score one or two points this game week that might actually be enough to carry you through game week 29 with limited damage and allow you to hold on to that free hit chip so in theory you might need a free hit at all as long as you have those key players and those those key attackers really is what we want to be thinking about. Which of these do you have? Do you have enough of them? Can you survive with just these attackers and maybe one or two additional players? I think that's going to be fine. Um, eight players or more, I think you're in a good situation to go into this game week without a free hit after transfers, of course. So here are the kind of uh, players I will be looking for in game week 29. And I think we separate them into three categories. And this works for free hitters if you're building a free hit team or if you are just using transfers alone or wildcarding. I don't know what you guys are doing with your tactics this game, but this is what I would be looking to do. So first of all, we have our core players. These are our super template, super high owned players. Fleckham, Doughty, Pedro Porro, Bowen, Douglas Louise, Madison Son, and then Morris, Tony Watkins as your forwards there. Now, you don't have to pick all of these players, but these as your core players, you would be looking to own most of them. After that, you potentially supplement them with some differentials, such as Region, Roslev, Doggy in defense for midfielders, Bailey, Barkley, Gibbs White, Elanga, Kudus, Kulisevsky, Paqueta. Up front, Fafana, Duran, Muniz, Wissa, Wood. These kind of players are be bringing in to spice up and supplement that game week 29 core of players that you do have initially. Uh, a lot of the core players in the attacking positions, I think, are worth taking hits for. You know, if you are if you don't have one of Bowen, Douglas Louise, Madison, Son, Morris, Tony Watkins, take a hit to get that player in. I think there's no problem. I think a lot of these players are pretty likely to actually pay back your hit for this game week, particularly those Spurs players. If you're looking to carry them into game week 30 as well, uh, they play against Luton Spurs. So that's a good fixture next game week. 
Um, and there's the, you've got those kind of meh players who you might have them already. You might be on a free hit and you kind of just have to fill up the remaining spots in your team. Maybe the bench positions, you just need to fill them up with something. And those kind of players, I would say Ariola, Kaminsky for goalkeepers, uh, Alex Moreno, Cash, Collins, Consa, Murillo, Robinson, Romero. These players are, you know, they're okay. They'll, they're fine. They're one, two point players that might help supplement your team um, in, the, in the weakest way possible, but at least they're there. You know, so yeah, core players, those are your, that's your main body of players. Differentials, you spice up your free hit team or your, your, your team using your transfers, using those differentials. And then if you've got any meh players in there, then I guess, so what, meh. <laughs> so this is what I believe to be the Game Week 29 free hit template. Now that's not to say that this is a team I would recommend. I don't think I would recommend this team. I don't think this is the best team necessarily, but I think this is going to be the most popular players that we see on the free hit this game week. So if you are building a free hit, maybe you start with something like this and then you start modifying it, taking out those players that maybe you're less confident in and bringing in players who you think are and maybe add a bit of spice or, you know, you feel very confident in that they could be, this could be their game week. So let's go through this game week 29 template. Flecken in goal, a defense of Doughty, Pedro Porro, and Rorslev here. Rorslev, probably the most debatable player in that back line. So he's probably the first player you would potentially switch to someone less template, I guess. In midfield, we've got Son, Bowen, Madison, and Douglas Luiz. Again, Douglas Luiz, probably the weakest candidate in that midfield that you might want to think about switching out to someone else, but he is very much a template pick for this game week. And then up front, Tony, Watkins, and Morris. Obviously, with Watkins' potential injury there, you might... You know, you might think about seeing who your first backup player is going to be. Could be interesting. Morris up front there as well. Probably the weak link in this attack as well. Not that he's a bad pick or anything like that, but just, you know, maybe you could go for someone else here. I think he's probably the player I'd be most willing to sacrifice in this front three. On the bench, I've got Kaminsky here. Kudus as our first attacking bench option. So he would come in for Watkins if Watkins was unavailable. And we've got Cash and Murillo to complete the bench there as well. 57.9 predicted points for this team. Uh, Fantasy Football Hub game week racing of 97%. Of course, if you want to start building your own template, feel free to use the link in the description to check out Fantasy Football Hub's My Team Tool. And this costs just 93.9 million pounds. Very, very nice indeed. So on the captain, Tony Device. Let's move on to our wildcard template that I build, built today as well. So this is a really interesting one. So uh, obviously I've been saying a lot, I don't recommend this game week for a wild card. And if you've planned right, you probably won't need to wild card this game week. However, I understand that everyone's uh, situation is slightly different. Different people will be taking different routes in FPL and that is absolutely fine. There are going to be some people out there who might need a wild card this game week. And if you were to do that, I would do something like this. And I built this team and I kind of thought, hey, actually, this isn't so bad. This is actually a pretty decent team. I think this actually could potentially work. And it would also, if you don't have a free hit, uh, or if you do have a free hit, but you would prefer to wildcard, I think this wildcard 29 could also work with a free hit in 34. It actually could potentially work. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to pull off this kind of strategy, but I think it could potentially work for those of you guys who just do not want a free hit this week for whatever reason. So in goal, we have got Fleckham, uh, a defense of Robinson, tough game against Spurs, but Sheffield United next game week and then Nottingham Forest, which is pretty nice for the Fulham defender. We've got Pedro Porro in there. Gabriel, who is our only player in this wildcard draft who doesn't have a fixture. So we're going with three defensive players, one goalkeeper, two defenders in this wildcard draft who have a fixture in game week 29. And honestly, I think that's enough. I wouldn't want to have too many like defenders for game week 29 in a wild card because most of the defenders who play this game week you are going to want to sell in future game weeks anyway uh, in midfield son bowen madison and ilanga as our four-man midfield pretty nice going for a little differential there in ilanga and up front tony watkins and muniz so even if watkins is unavailable for this game week he should be back in game week 30 at the absolute latest you know it's a cut it's not going to take more than seven to ten days to heal over even if he does require um some stitches there so i, I think watkins is absolutely fine to have in a wildcard team take that risk yes you could end up playing with nine players which would not be ideal but remember you're on a wild card, not a free hit. You don't have the pick of the bunch. You do need to make sure you are also preparing for future game weeks. And maybe you do want to switch out Watkins for someone else. If you are on a wild card right now, I would understand if you wanted to avoid that risk. But it is a big risk 
either way. On the bench, Raya coming in for future game weeks there. Salah and Virgil van Dijk. Nice double up on the Liverpool uh, team going into game week 30 and beyond. That could be really nice. Uh, and we've got Gusto here as our final Chelsea defender in that final position who would be quite nice to bring in for that Burnley game. Now, using this game week 29 wildcard draft template, what you'd be probably looking to do is sell, depending on your budget, because this team costs 101.6 million, depending on your budget, you'd probably be looking to downgrade Bowen to Palmer in game week 30 when Palmer plays against Burnley. And then in game week 31, you'll use that money that you just banked by downgrading Bowen to Palmer and upgrade an Ollie Watkins, potentially Tony, depending on your budget, up to an Erling Haaland. And that will set your team up for all future game weeks. You'll have all of the top players and you'll be ready to go again despite having wild carded in game week 29 which didn't sound like a great strategy but actually i think could work for game week 29 captains i think with the potential injury to watkins maybe there's even more appeal in son at the moment but i mean to be fair like i say watkins is going to be binary this game week you have a plays or doesn't play so if you have your captain's armband on watkins i think that's fine as long as you have your vice captain set very very sensibly to another one of these players so son is definitely the standout captain for this game week after that tony watkins and bowen are obviously very appealing players as well to go for but son is by far the most popular pick we saw in our 100 experts video from a couple of days ago everyone's captaining son um they really really are a couple of people captaining tony as well but it really really is quite narrow this game week in terms of captaincy selection do of course go check that video out if you haven't done already and a very simple goalkeeper start order this game week. I've just basically ranked my favourite goalkeepers for this game week. And there's only eight of them. So uh, in my opinion, the best or worst goalkeepers go Flecken, Kaminsky, Vicario, Martinez, Trafford, Leno, Sells and Ariola. Very, very simple. Uh, very, very good. Very, very nice. And that concludes our final decisions video for today, guys. If you did enjoy it, make sure you drop a like before you disappear and subscribe if you want this kind of content on every Friday before the deadline so you can make your final decisions with all of the information that you could possibly need. Guys, don't forget to check out another video if you haven't done already, including my personal free hit draft in yesterday's video. Uh, until then, thank you so much for watching. See you on the deadline stream tomorrow, and I'll see you later, mates.